This is $195, which if any of you may know about the coffee grinder scene or anything like that, $195 for an espresso grinder is pretty unique. How's it going guys? This is Luke from Coffee House here today at Obsessed Garage HQ uh, talking a little bit about our Destination OG line and specifically the coffee product lineup. We've spent a lot of time expanding and you know researching the actual product line, making sure that we're getting the right coffee equipment to suggest to you. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Fellow Opus here. We're going to break this down head to toe, talk a little bit about why I think this is a really important addition to the lineup. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so fellow Opus, let's go ahead and talk about what we get in the box when you open it. Because you get a couple little unique things that uh, I think tend to uh, lean us into the video a little bit more. But one thing you get is this alongside the actual grounds canister. If you're familiar with the fellow Ode, uh, this is something that's very similar, but this time it's actually plastic. Uh, this, instead of being like kind of like a rubberized material is a little bit, uh, you know, kind of a lighter plastic. And then this actual canister, as well as the inside, is actually plastic too. So you have no metal fins here, but you do have a little bit of a plastic fin in there. So it's still gonna guide your coffee out, everything like that. Um, but yeah, so plastic. And then you also get this little unique thing. Um, if you know coffee, you may know what this is for, but this is because this actually is supposed to do espresso. So this right here, obviously, you'll slide it under here in, you know, in place of this. So you go ahead and do one of those, do one of those. And then with the magnetized base, which is still here, it's going to lock into place and you can actually grind for espresso. So you can go ahead and take your porta filter on here, flip it over and you're going to be good to go. Um, this is interesting because this price point is, um, you know, has been eluding me for the last couple of weeks when I've been spending some time with this, because this is $195, which, if any of you may know about the coffee grinder scene or anything like that, $195 for an espresso grinder is pretty unique. Uh, you're not able to often get good quality espresso and definitely not good espresso and drip coffee out of something anywhere near that price. I mean, you're talking 10 times the price to be able to do something like that. But before we jump into what makes this thing so good, let's go ahead and just get, get through the drawbacks of why I think this is actually $195. So as I said, uh, drawbacks with the Opus here, um, obviously one thing is the materiality. Not only is this plastic, uh, but everything on the grinder is plastic. Um, the base is actually plastic, the button's plastic, the backing is plastic, the lid is plastic, um, the hopper, you know, all of this front facade is all plastic. And I mean, you know, there are gonna be drawbacks that are involved with a $195 grinder, uh, like the Ode, you know, which is almost entirely metal, you know, from the outside. But there are some familiarities, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what makes this thing familiar to the other, o, you know, the Ode and the other fellow grinder lineup and uh, why I think this kind of fits in a good place. First things first is you have the actual uh, hopper lid here, which uniquely, um, I don't know if they intended on doing this, but from a, um, from a machining tolerance perspective, this actually does create a good vacuum when you, do, uh, when you place it in this hopper here. This is really important to get all of the, you know, retained coffee grounds out of your burr set. So the next shot of espresso you get is not going to be inclusive of what was you know in there a week ago so it is nice that the tolerance is there to be able to do something like that but even in the uh, let's say 100 times i've put this hopper on here we do have a good bit of scoring on the inside of here so it being plastic you know you are going to experience a good deal of wear uh, talking a little bit more about this top little lid you have a handy little guide here which uh, if you've had any other fellow products that might be familiar to you but you know it goes anywhere from 11 being cold brew to one being espresso. Uh, and then there's kind of a one and a two here, which presumably means like, uh, if you don't want to dose your coffee, this is like a shot of espresso, something like that. Anyways, uh, next we have the actual hopper, uh, you know, canister here, which is very similar to the actual Ode. Um, it seems like almost the exact same material, which is nice too, it's a nice familiarity. And uh, when we get into it, we'll talk a little bit about how it locks and removes. But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about the actual grind selector here. 
Uh, so you have about 25% more selection opportunities than you did in the original Ode and uh, Gen 2 Ode, which both have 31, this has 41. So you get a little bit more out of it, and not to mention you have something else at your disposal, which is, when we go ahead and remove this, a blue locking ring right here. When you go ahead and push that blue locking ring down, you're actually able to fine tune stepless this actual grinder here. So you get a little bit more out of it. Let's say you're very close to making that perfect little pour over with your conical burr set. You are able to actually adjust it, you know, on the fly like that, which I think is really nice. Uh, next up is the rest of the facade. You know, everything is fairly familiar. One thing I don't um, particularly understand, something they will adjust likely in the future, maybe not, but something that was a little funky to me, is the button here. Um, instead of just a standard on-off button, it actually uh, turns on for a timed amount. So if you click it once, it's 30 seconds. If you click it twice, uh, yeah, it's 60 seconds. And if you click it three times, it's 90 seconds, which is an interesting choice for me. Um, personally, I would just like to hit it on once and then turn it off when I'm done. But you know, let's say you're running around in the morning or something like that and you leave it, it's good to have it turn off and not, you know, burn itself out or anything like that. Last thing on the actual bottom here is, like I said before about the scoring on the actual lid, you are getting a good bit of scoring on the plastic base here. You know, plastic on plastic abrasion is causing a little bit of scratches, but those are the kind of drawbacks that are involved in the, the price point of this. You know, having a fully plastic grinder, but having something that's still very good at $195, there are gonna be a couple, you know, materiality drawbacks. So I've talked a little bit about the negatives of this grinder and, you know, touched on the positives, but now I really wanna talk about the real positives of this grinder. Um, a couple good things this has going for it. One, starting from the bottom and going up this time, we do have a really nice kind of setup here with that magnetic uh, little locking base, you know. And what's nice about this versus the actual Ode is there's no like metal little like magnet here. So it's not gonna rip off like a lot of the, uh, the Odes had problems with. So we're locked into place going, you know, good, ready to go. And inside here, we actually have anti-static technology, which is from the O Gen 2. So you don't have to wait for a second Gen Opus like you did for the Gen 1, because the Gen 1 was so bad with the static. Um, so I love to see that, you know, you still are gonna get a little bit if you go ahead and push that like baffles down. But uh, for the, you know, for the most part, it's actually really good in that category. Secondly is the burr set. You have 40 millimeter conical burrs in here. Uh, as opposed to the Ode, which has 64 millimeter flat burrs. Uh, conical burrs will produce a greater variation, and they are in fact cheaper to produce on the actual production side of things. But what you do get is you get a proper variation of, um, you know, grind. So your espresso is going to taste very good, and your pour overs and, you know, other drip coffee features are actually gonna be a good deal easier to dial in, a lot more forgiving, and you know, fairly rewarding overall. So I really have no problem with the fact that this is a conical burr set. If anything, I actually kind of like it quite a bit. One thing I want to touch on that I think many of you are asking or willing to ask or wanting to ask is uh, does it actually make good espresso? You may have to dose up a little bit. You may have to you know, crank it all the way to the finest setting, but you're actually going to be able to yield quite a good espresso shot out of here. You know, having used hundreds and hundreds of different grinders, both on the commercial level and the home level, I've always been a hater of dual purpose grinders. I've never really found anything under the, you know, $2,000 price point that can actually do both in a good way. You know, even the EK, the Malcone EK43S or the EK43, those make amazing espresso, but you still have to do similar things to this. You still have to dose up, you still have to turn that pressure down, and you still have to baby that shot with any of these uh, non-doser grinders. You're still gonna have to watch that shot. But ultimately, I mean, this is really rewarding. If it could go a little finer, that would be nice, but ultimately, if you're kind of just fine adjusting that dose close to that one setting, you're gonna yield a really, really amazing result. And the last huge positive for me is, um, you know, when we're talking about those burrs, it's actually, getting to those burrs. So we have our lid here, we have our hopper here, which we just have to go ahead and turn it counterclockwise, just a little bit of a quarter turn, and then lift that out. So as we talked about before, we do have a blue little locking ring here for fine tuning, but if you look down into the actual burr set, you do have a little um, you know, metal wire that you can lift up, turn counterclockwise, and then you can actually pull the entire burr set out. So obviously the top piece, your base piece is attached to the motor in there. But this is really nice because if you're talking grind retention, if you're talking 
you know, serviceability, cleaning, having the ability to pull this burr set out on the fly like this, which presumably they will sell this as a whole set when you're ready to buy a new one, this is really nice. Having the ability to peek in there and really understand what's going on, not only is a great learning tool, but from a serviceability perspective, I mean, this is a home run. There are grinders that are 10, 20 times the price that can't even touch this serviceability. I mean, to have this level of getting into your grinder and doing things, cleaning it, you know, servicing it in a good way, this is really, really rewarding. A lot of people are gonna ask, why do I even need to consider the Ode when I have something like this? This can do everything that the Ode can do, but at half the price, and it can do more. It can make espresso, everything like that. And so I think if you think about the drawbacks that we talked about, you know, the burrs being smaller, having a little bit more grind variability, uh, you know, less expensive burrs, cheaper to produce burrs, and the materiality involved, I think you kind of get a good understanding of where this falls alongside, the, you know, the actual Ode. And so there is a good differentiation between the two, but I mean, without a doubt, if you're new to the coffee space, if you're just thinking about getting a good coffee grinder at home, maybe you have a hand grinder, or maybe you have like one of those little bodum, you know, something at home that you are ready to get rid of, I think this is a huge first step in the right direction. You're getting a really forgiving and adjustable machine overall, you're gonna be able to yield some really amazing coffee here. And I think this type of grinder will help pave the way for you to fully understanding where you want you know, your coffee experience to lie. And so with all of that said, I think the Fellow Opus is one of the best new grinders. Fellow is really challenging other grinder companies to produce high quality top-notch grinders. I mean, there are grinders that are five times the price of this that do a way worse job at not only just brewed coffee, but also espresso. I mean, anything in espresso that's near $200, this is completely an anomaly in this category. I love this thing. I think you and everybody tuning in will love this thing. It's just a question of where you know your preference lies in terms of materiality. Are you willing to sacrifice uh, you know, the fit and finish of this grinder? for the product that it yields you know i mean the price points there but it's really a question of uh you know what are you willing to pull back on in exchange for that lower price or you know things like that ultimately i love it and i think you will uh, i appreciate you guys tuning in again i'm luke from coffee house and thanks for watching